James Hopefully Miller longer than for the bit. Region Two Swim Meet, which you can tune in for. You can tune into on talk or on TV Ten and WR and RTV on YouTube. Welcome to the show, James. How you doing? I'm doing really good. Glad to be here. Thanks for coming on with us. It's obviously a big meet tomorrow, the Region Two Swim Meet, which we thought up until like two or three weeks, or maybe yeah, three weeks ago, that it was going to be in Fairmont, but it got moved to Shepherd. So uh, we're going to be on the call once again for it tomorrow. Yes, it's a much. Um, it's um, I know the swimmers are excited because um, the Fairmont pool is a little older and it's got it's got a tricky turn wall. So luckily, it's at Hedgesville where they're where they're comfortable, and I think you're going to see a lot of fast times there. Uh, just talk to us about what teams and uh, will be competing here in this year's regional, James. Okay, well, we have the Fairmont schools. So those, uh, that would be the East Fairmont High School and Fairmont Senior. Um, then we also have North Marion. And then on the other side, um, we also have Hampshire. And then we have the six EPAC schools, Jefferson, Washington, Spring Mills, Musselman, Martinsburg, and Hedgesville. Um, so we got about 10 teams competing. James, uh, can you highlight some of the swimmers and I guess some of the top guys? I know uh, Lugo from Jefferson uh, was somebody that stood out last year and is having another great season this year. Um, can you just, I guess, run down some of the, some of the top guy, guys and girls that we will see tomorrow and, uh, I guess, people to look out for? Well, you did, you did, um, you did, you, you did nail it on the first one. Nick Lugo is, and he's done a different event than, than normal. Usually, he's a 200 yard IM and a 100 yard butterfly. But uh, for the regional meet this time, he's doing the 200 yard freestyle, um, which not only is he seated first um, in our region, but he's also, if his time, his seat time is true, he will be um, seated first in the state. And that's the same thing with his 100 yard butterfly. So. Um, not only are we talking about regional championships, we might be talking about two state championships for him. Um, and then we've got a lot of relays, um, a lot of relays on the, the line. So um, the way regionals works is, is if there's um, two, the top two relays qualify for states. And then for the first day of states, um, you're trying to get just 12 schools. Um, and so there's a lot of our schools in the area that are right on that 11, 12 line. So we've got, um, the Spring Mills girls has two relays that, that could be right on the 11th, 12th. Um, the highest seated relay actually, um, for the girls side would be Martinsburg's 400 free. And then we also have, um, Hedgesville and Jefferson. Um, they're seated eighth and ninth in the 400 yard guys relay. And then, um, Musselman, um, we have, or we're seated 12th in the 200 medley relay and also, um, 12th in the 200 yard freestyle relay. Um, but in addition, we also have a couple other people like uh, Eshawn Hattie from Washington. He is seated six in the 100 yard breaststroke. And if you finish sixth place or higher, you've got a chance to get um, a medal. So he might get a medal for his, um, for his 100 yard breaststroke. And then we also have Lily Rise and Weber, who is seated eighth. And she is also seated. Um, she is seated eighth in both her 200 yard freestyle and 100 back. Um, then um, we've got a mixture. We've got a lot of people seated in the 11 12 line. We've got uh, Brianna Shirk of Musselman, uh, Sawyer Wright um, from Musselman as well, Logue Shriver from Jefferson. Um, in both their events, they're seated right about the 11th or 12th line. So, and then there's a, a Sam Williams from Washington High School. She is uh, seated 11th in the 100 yard breaststroke. And then we also got Abby Vass who is seated 10th uh, in her 50-yard freestyle. James, uh, with all that, for tomorrow's regional, uh, how many people can then go on, qualify for states through the region? So um, we're probably looking, um, if I'm just looking at, there is, there's quite a few. So um, is there, um, the, the top three of each individual meet will go. Um, and then what happens is then there's wild cards after that. So there's 12 wild cards. Um, unfortunately, um, our region probably won't get very many of those wild cards. There's a couple that we might get, but if they're, if they finish in the top three, um, luckily they'll be, um, the, the people that are seated in the top three, they'll be closer to finishing in the 12th or 13th range, but there's not necessarily going to be a lot of wild cards on the individual side. There's just one region, uh, region one, which has the Morgantown, 
Parkersburg, um, those schools. That region is also really strong. And then, of course, Robert Seabird in Region 3 and, and Bridgeport in, in, in that region, strong. And then Region 4 is the Charleston area. Those three regions um, have a lot of really strong swimmers and more teams in them than ours. So they usually get a lot more wild cards. James, do you think we will see any records or any anything broken tomorrow in that category? Um, I think Nick Lugo could probably break um, the 100-yard butterfly record. Um, in terms of the other ones, I, um, he's, he's the one to, to majorly watch. I don't, uh, foresee, I mean, again, there, there might be people that do it, but I think he is the, I think he is the one that is closest to doing it. Um, there might be, um, a Fairmont senior, um, Alexis Ramsey. She broke the record, regional record last year. So she might break her own record in the 200 yard I am, but, um, that's, those are probably be about the only records that'll be broken uh, tomorrow. And James, I saw, I believe it was in the Martinsburg Journal, uh, after I want to say it might have been the EPAC championships, but uh, did I see that Nick Lugo had ju- had gotten into a car accident and then he swam like two days later? Um, I do believe, yes. Um, and I I had heard the story, but uh, people were. Um, I didn't know we, the only thing I noticed as a coach is I noticed that, um, he had like a, he was just favoring his shoulder a little bit. So, um, but yes, I, I have heard that. That is definitely true. He did get into, um, he did get into a little accident. Luckily he was okay. He was able to, um, you know, I guess as a coach, you're really proud that he's able to tough that out. James, uh, not only are you in charge of swimwv.co, you also are the assistant coach of. Musselman's swim team and will be down there throughout the day whenever uh, your athletes are in the pool racing and cheering them on. So what are you most excited for uh, from Musselman this year in the region? Well, I will tell you, um, um, for the guys' side, we've had, we have um, a really good guys' team this year. Um, it's small, so um, you look at success different ways. Some people look at success as winning, um, you know, regional championships and, and, and second place and trying to get the most points. Um, but unfortunately you have to have, you know, a team of about 14, 15 deep to kind of be able to do that. Uh, we only have about eight people, um, swimming at regionals. So even though most of our, most of our swimmers are seated high, um, there's not really a chance for us to win that. So what I'm really looking forward to is having like the highest percentage of, of entered events, uh, making it to states. And I'm really excited for our relays because um, I can tell you, I don't think uh, Musselman's had three relays go. It's really hard to get three relays to go to states, but I think this year might be the year that we get three relays to go to states. And I'm also really excited to see Brianna Shirk. We have a lot of freshmen on our team. So that's um, a lot of the other schools, like Jefferson has a lot of juniors and seniors. Um, Spring Mills Girls has a lot of seniors. Um, so we're a fairly young team, and to be – um, seated as high we, as we are in the state is, is really exciting to see. James, when we did this last year, it was a pretty big hit on our YouTube channel. I think we got nearly 2.5 thousand views. And uh, I guess, um, how do you think that swimming has grown in the area? And how do you hope uh, to see it grow in the near future? Um, well, I think swimming has grown um, just because I call it like a hidden gym um, it, because once you, once you do it, you end up liking it. And the difference between swimming and a lot of other sports is this is a, this is a life skill. So you're basically racing a life skill. So it'd be like um, the only other sport that's similar to that is track, which is, you know, you get to run. Um, and so because it's a life skill, it's that. Also what I always tell athletes is like the wintertime, you, you have Thanksgiving and Christmas where you eat all these meals. If you swim in the summer or if you swim in the wintertime, you're going to be in major shape. And that's why, that's why you get a lot of tall basketball players or you get a lot of shot put players or you get a lot of soccer players. You get all these other sports that, although swimming isn't their first sport, um, they use that to condition for the other events. Um, and so that's, I think, once, once that secret has gotten out that, like, hey, you can, you can condition by doing this sport. And then um, some of them, I know we had a kid last year that, um, never swam before, um, was six foot three. Um, and because he was six foot three, he ended up making it to States because he just, you know, we, we were able to get it. It's, it's, you know, if you're athletic, you end up 
are able to make it to states. Um, the only thing that I wish in the future is I wish we could have more um, swimming pools um, to practice in. Unfortunately, uh, the six schools in both Berkeley and Jefferson County have to um, go to Shepherd to swim, which Shepherd is an awesome, amazing facility, but it's kind of cramped when there's only six teams. So, you know, the basketball teams can practice five days a week. Um, every sport can practice five days a week. We get uh, three hours a week. Um, you know, each of our sessions, one hour each. And it's really hard to, it's really hard to get into a rhythm because every sport you need a rhythm. Uh, um, basketball, you need to have that rhythm. You need to be able to shoot so many foul shots. Uh, the baseball pitcher, you need to be able to throw so many times. So we don't, all, we don't, we're not able to get that rhythm. And then it puts us, so despite the fact that we don't have that rhythm, we're able to be in the 11th or 12th. But if we probably had more pools, and being able to practice five days a week, you'd probably see a lot more Eastern Panhandle schools, you know, being in the third or fourth seed in the state. And just, we would just dominate, we would be closer to dominating the state than, um, than where we are now, which we're doing great for the limited resources that we have. All righty, James. Uh, excited to get to see you tomorrow and get to uh, call the regional championship on TV10 and WR and RTV I, on YouTube. So thank I you can't for wait either. joining I know, us today. I had a great time. Take care, James. All right, you too. All right, that was James Miller, assistant coach for the Muscleman Swim Team, as well as runner swim WV.co. He'll be uh, on the broadcast tomorrow from for most time to time. He's going to you know step away, be with his team a little bit, but obviously be on the broadcast with you tomorrow, uh, Colin. And uh, you can tune in tomorrow. What time are we going on? Ten forty-five. I was thinking more ten fifty. Ten fifty. All right, ten fifty. It'll start at eleven a.m. Yep. And it'll be going on all day. We'll put the uh, links on Facebook throughout. Uh, we'll put the link on Facebook tomorrow morning. But uh, that'll be the Region 2 West Virginia High School uh, Region 2 Swim Championships tomorrow on TV10. WRNR TV on YouTube. Be on the lookout for a link or just go to WRNR TV on YouTube to find uh, the live stream tomorrow beginning around 10.50 a.m.